apostles and others were revealed on it were well. He said, Citations to the book of the elect, which was the doctrine, brought the four winds, earth, and all two day and necessary through the Mississippi count, hey, and through the spirit, man. We're gonna uh, uh, go into the subject of uh, high been, you know, uh, a high level of faith, man. Because in this truth, man, we gotta have a high level of faith, man. And believe me, how about me out shot? And as his words say, that uh, we'll be faithful and true, man. We have to believe that the things that the Lord said, according to the scriptures, are going to be faithful and true, man. Because we're coming in some 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 really detrimental times, man. Where if you don't have that faith in how about me out shot, hey, you, you're going to uh, uh, be subject to destruction, man. Because if you don't have faith in the Lord, man, why would he, you know what I'm saying, put his, uh, 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 his, his uh, uh, love and, and mercy upon you to deliver you from the destruction and the chaos that's coming, man. Because, I mean, a person that doesn't have faith in you, man, is, is a person who don't believe in you. If you don't believe in a person, then how can you truly accept that person as someone of value? Man? So we're going to get through the scriptures, to the scriptures, man, the Lord willing, brother, to be edified. Let's Let's brother, I'm here. I got to start leaving this thing. Uh, Romans 8 and 24. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he get hope for? Right, man. So that's that level, high level of faith, man, to uh, uh, have hope into something that you don't physically see, man. But but that you can uh, uh, just spiritually feel the truth of the matter, man. You know, and that's that gift of faith, man, of your high watching me out shot. Because, you know, you have to have, especially when it comes out, people, man, they have to see it, they have to feel it, they have to touch it to believe in it, man. But to 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 read scriptures and and, and, and have that 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 spirit of Yahweh Shimmy Yahweh Shimmy Yahshah stored upon you to believe those words, man, because those words come into life in your mental when you're reading them, and it's it's, it's it's just being like a projector. You see the things that are happening. You're reading about the salvation. You're reading about delivery. You can see yourself and your brethren, man, be being up in them cherries, man. You can see yourself and your brothers having spiritual powers, man. Just you know, just doing these things, that's, that, that's, that's, that's faith, man. And, and some people can't fathom that, man. You get to talking to certain individuals regarding that, they, they'll look at you sideways like you got a, a, a third head going out the back of your neck or something, man. But, but to believe upon the things that the scriptures say without seeing them, man, that's a beautiful thing. Because we, we there's been, our forefathers, man, have seen things that the Lord did that walk with them. It still couldn't really just grasp it in so many cases, man. So we're in a beautiful position, man, to have that, that that spiritual belief, that gift of faith in these scriptures, man. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. And we hope for what we see not, man. We hope for the kingdom. We don't see the kingdom. You know, though the kingdom is in us, we don't physically see it, man. You know, we hoping for this, this, these, these beautiful, extravagant things that you can't see on this earth, man. Because the Lord said, paradise is already, well, paradise is already given, man, prepared for you, man. So the Lord is going to give us things that we can't fathom, man. But that's the beauty of the faith, because you're imagining, you're thinking about it as you're reading, as you're uh, uh, fellowshipping with brothers, though you don't physically see it. You, you're imagining, and your imagination doesn't come close to surpassing what the Lord has in store for us, man. I'm also hoping to be of the elect. You know, because, you know, we understand that the kingdom is going to be given unto the entire nation of Israel for being the first fruits of being the recipients right, of the kingdom of heaven. Is what we truly hope for on this side. That's why we sacrifice these worldly pleasures for right now in order to gain the entire the entire world at the latter end. That's right. Man. Because you look at the blessing of being joint heirs between the world knowing Jesus Christ, whose real name is Yahweh Shah. You know, that's a, a vision that appears that, as though it's a far off. You know, but ultimately, he's going to be given the green light to come in to, 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 to redeem the elect, the chosen of the house of Israel, and give them what? And give them the king. Zechariah 9 and 12. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. So the stronghold represents this safety net that's going to this truth. Man. This is like our brother and shield from the spirit. It says, uh, you prisoners of hope. So we all are looking for the expected end from the spirit. That's why we all receive the salvation. Hey, bro, can you look up stronghold? Yeah. It goes back to the combat. The NLT says, come back to the place of safety. You know? 
Yeah, bro. Because I'm thinking that stronghold, you know, if what I'm thinking is correct, it goes into a uh, a fortress. What else to say? Okay, okay. So it's a different Greek word. You know how we pulling down strongholds? And he, oh, slog, slog, yeah. I'm tripping. That's well, we're really still though. A stronghold is a belief system. You gotta believe in it, right? Even uh, today, I do declare I will render double to them. Reading NLT says, "Come back to the place of safety, all you prisoners who still have hope." I promise this very day that I will repay two blessings for each of your troubles. Sacrifice the second Adam, right? Of whom came nations, tribes, people, and kindreds out of number. So we all came out of Adam, right? Noah had three sons Shem, Shem, Japheth, and Ham, and their lineage all went back to Adam. And every people walked after their own will and did wonderful things before thee. And the spies that mm -hmm. And again, in process of time, thou brought us the flood upon those that dwelt in the world and destroyed us them. And it came to pass in every of them that as death was to Adam, so was the flood to these. Nevertheless, one of them thou leftest, namely Noah, with his household of whom came all righteous men. Mm -hmm. So through Noah, what happened? We come through the leaders of Noah, right? The leaders of the elect, Lord will. 
was Betsy Crawford. Crawford. And it happened that when they that looked upon the earth began to multiply and had gotten them many children and were a great people, they be began again to be more ungodly than the first. Mm -hmm. Now when they lived so wickedly before thee, thou didst choose thee a man from among them whose name was Abraham. Mm -hmm. you know, so I'm saying to read it because it's getting to the point, the climax of falling away, going to sin, going to wickedness. But now turn it back into the heavenly father says we're to see him ten times more. So now we understand that what we're looking for is something that's faith based. That's right. Because we understand what the promise that was written. It says and that it made us an everlasting covenant with him. It's quiet. Promising him a kid that a child for righteousness. Faith. Abraham is faith. You know, you get, uh, Romans, uh, Romans 9 and 7. The mm -hmm. You know, because when people look at like even Deion Sanders, Deion Sanders called himself the father Abraham. Well, he know the truth, but don't know the truth. That's how he coined himself when it comes to dealing with his children. Mm. You know, but it, it, it's all biblical, it's all spiritual in an essence, as it is written up in the Our people have a zeal, right, but not according to knowledge. They have this godly zeal, godly zeal, this godly concept about themselves, but yet they don't know the true identity. Yet they don't understand that these traditional customs are. are, are Pagan and most money. That's the book of Romans. Book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 7. Okay. It's like, it's like. This is the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 7. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. You know, because what the the the, the dominance of a line or a generation goes into what the loins of a man, which is his seed. So Abraham was the chosen. So and, and Abraham was the the, the the progenitor and the father of the nation of Israel. And we understand. With that particular promise that the heavenly father made unto Abraham, we understand that the 12 tribes of the, of the nation of Israel are the true children, right, of Yahweh Shem Yahweh and ultimately the chosen seed out of all nations on the face of the planet. You know? Verse 8. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of the Most High, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. You know, the children of the promise, meaning what? so-called Negroes, so-called Hispanics, so-called Native American Indians, right? So-called Latino. The law sheep of the house of Israel. That's one. Verse 9. For this is the word of the promise. At this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son. Yep, yep, yep. You know? Now I'm going to jump back. Hey, Grandma. 32 and 13. Uh -huh. 32 and 13. Because a lot of people, man, like, like this book, when you look at how the scripture goes into how they are entangled with the simplicity that is Yahweh Shah, like, this word is, is really a precious gem, a jewel, and a, and a beautiful gift that was granted from on high. Because the understanding of this is so far removed from the average individual, it's like almost that we don't exist when the word's been spoken. Not out here on the highways, but just in life in general like we literally move like invisible beings both in our personal lives and also the public scene man right? because the spirit of light for some reason it is never seen by a spirit of darkness that spirit of darkness man is is, is, is a complete utter darkness almost like a thick darkness from Egypt, man. Right? so thick that you can feel it but that's that mask and that veil of uh, uh, of unknowingness that the Most High has placed upon those that He does not desire. This Exodus 32, verse 13. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swears by thy own self. He swears by his own self. So the Most High did what? He placed his name upon us as a man. And, and there's no getting around that. But that would be allegedly, if us taking upon that role of being the chosen, they would call that being an anti us. You know? We'll be into ourselves because we're telling you that you don't fit the description of the people that are under the curses. 
You own the diamond district. You own Hollywood. You own the music industry. You own all these major corporations. You own you, you own the plantations. You own the slave boats, and ultimately you own us as a people. But we're anti this for saying that, that we're are, are now in these last days because the Most High has raised up the tabernacle of David ultimately, continuously. But ultimately, he has placed his spirit throughout the four corners of the earth. And now that breath of life is being breathed inside of these people from continent to continent, country to country, land to land, state to state. And now you have a problem with it. But that only shows that your kingdom is on the decline. Because before the, the what do you call it, the infrastructure goes down, before the, the, the economy goes down, the money system goes down, before the people become morally corrupt, you know? All those things happen simultaneously, but the key factor to knowing that the kingdom is going down is that the Most High has started setting up people who are signed in crime for wickedness. The Most High has finally set up individuals who are facing the oppressor face to face, accusing him of the treacherous acts that he's committed unto the Heavenly Father's children. That's all it says, um, uh, like, uh, Exodus 32, verse 13, it says, it says unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed. And that's faith. We know that the Most High, even though we're in, in new people right now, because uh, through the confusion of faith and having different complexes and people identify themselves by another nation outside of who they truly are inwardly, we know that the Heavenly Father is going to stand firm upon that promise of Him making us more grand dear and innumerable. That's the sands of the sea and the stars of the heavens, man. And there's no getting around it. And, and that's why you look at people who who call us uh, uh, being racist because like we're just all black. Like, no, color does not even matter. You know, I can have a, a brother that I salute and love dearly, but he could look just like someone of, uh, 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 from Japan. He could look like someone from Kenya. He could look like someone from East Europe. I can dig him out of the uh, 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 slums of, of Germany and have him look like someone of a European descent. So color does not matter. Esau, right, the, 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 the Caucasoid gave us color as a mechanism ultimately to turn against one another. But it also was identified for him to place white superior above dark. That's why even from a lower level, whenever there's some type of calamity, death, police, shooting, they always do what? Black and brown unity. Why do you focus on black and brown unity? Because you understand that we are more closely related spiritually than those that are disconnected. But of course, you've got those sprinkles here and there, you know, who try to jump into the, 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 the climax of being, yeah, you know, they try to jump into it, try to be on one, one accord. They always somehow Cherokee Indian. It's like the only one they can come up with. You know, but ultimately, the spirit of the Heavenly Father is dealing with his truth, his true children, his true sin. It says, and they shall inherit it forever. Yeah, yeah. Get that for elder. And they're going to inherit it forever. That's why it's going to be an everlasting kingdom. You know? What's going on, my man? You know, it's going to be an everlasting kingdom that the Most High is going to set up underneath the rulership of his only begotten son, and King David. This is the book Ezekiel, chapter 36, starting at verse 22. Therefore I say unto you, the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, I power, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whether ye went, and I will sanctify my name, I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them, and the heathen shall know that I am the Lord your house. And how you profane the Most High's name? You profane it by using it in vain. You profane it by your acts that you confess that you convert yourselves spiritually unto Him, but convert it back to the wickedness of this world. Like when you take upon the Most High's name, you take upon the righteousness that comes with it. That's why His name in these last days have not been given unto all people, man. You know, you got certain Israelite camps out there who don't call upon the name. You have certain people in the world who don't know the name. You have certain people who do know the name but decide not to call upon the name. But then you got that certain sect of people who constantly call upon the name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. 
through the Holy Spirit. I am the most high, Yahweh, said the Lord our power, when I shall be sanctified in you before the eyes. For I will take from you among the heathens and gather you out of all the countries and will bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean for all your filthy from all your filthiness and from all your idols. He says gonna bring us inside the land. The those Jewish individuals over there call themselves in the home in the, in the holy land right now. Doing what? Still eating kosher pig, right? Which is nothing but swine. Right. They gave given a clean name. They're still uh, conducting and, and, and partaking in in gay parades, les lesbianism, homosexuality. You know, taking upon these uh, fetishes to where they're doing strange things to to to, to, to do one boys when it comes to their circumcision. They be in the organ traffic. Oh, how many so-called Jews was that? About thirty-two. You know, they got caught. Oh, was that New Jersey? You know, for organ trafficking on the black market. Like you people are the authors of wickedness, but yet you want to uh, 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 blackball somebody when it comes to speaking out. But nobody's brought up who they got Jerry back in 1952. When he did Jerry Jones, you know, nobody's bringing it up. He's a uh, uh, an NFL team owner. Right? Show you that. That, that, that these current wicked spirits are the same old wicked spirits. Right? The same way he lined his he, he lined his boys up and he picking and choose. He said his his other organ, organ, organization members up in positions to go pick the best the best nigga they can find for him to come play on his plantation, which is his uh, a dome, his super dome. Like like you can't get around these particular things, but everybody ignores them. everybody act like you're not a slave. Um, back in the Ezekiel 36 and 26, no, 36 and 25, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you, and a new heart also will I give you, a new spirit will I put with, within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. He's going to reprogram us to be like fashion after his man. Right. The law and statutes of him. It's natural. Yeah. 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 And we believe that. We yeah. believe that. We believe this imperfection that we walk in on a day to day basis that it, it, it's going to be completely reversed. Not a 360, you know, not a 90 degree. It's going to be completely 80. It's going to be a 180, a complete opposite of the direction that we're going right now. When you look at being poor, it's going to be the complete opposite of being poor. It's going to be extremely opposite of being poor. When you look at being wicked, we're going to be extremely opposite of being wicked. The way, the, the way that both sides are going to program our inward parts and our minds, right? Righteousness is not even going to be a word that you talk about anymore. Yeah, we're going to be the express image of them. We're going to be the express image of the Father, mm -hmm. who is only begotten Son. That's right, bro. And that's in, in, in faith. We don't even believe that we know it. That's right. The scripture that tells us to do what? To endure until the end. That, that's the hard part. Because Satan does what? You know? Hey, Satan got a pair of uh, 12 and a half days on. Tiptoe in his jaws and walk around being a complete nigga to everybody he can enter into, man. You run it yeah, you tour and on the earth. Up and down. And nobody's above that because he tempted our Lord himself. Uh, yes, I'm on that book. Listen, listen. Second Ezra 1 and 36. It says, They have seen no prophets, yet they shall call their sins to remembrance and acknowledge them. I take to witness the grace of the people to come, whose little ones rejoice in gladness. And little ones refer to the whole elect. I was shy, he was talking to his disciples. He called them like little children, man. Because when you come back into his phone, his knowledge, you got to be liking it to like a child. You know, so you got to be reprogrammed with a new mindset, a new way of thinking, man. It's like a new way of life. You know, that old shit, as it says, over in the society, and that old shit, it was tough, it was bullshit, man. So it's like a new mindset, man. You know? 
it says that though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, so with a physical means we have to see the Hawasha, but we see brothers coming through the vibration of the Hawashi Hawasha in these latter days, it's like we spiritually see the Hawasha, man. Like the Hawasha, he dwells one or two through the air of his name. It says, yet the spirit, they believe the thing that I say. He said that he's going to give us the kingdom. We believe that like, wholeheartedly that he's going to do that for us, man. It says number 2319 that the most high is not a man that he should not. So he said he's going to do something. The best we know that he's going to do so. He said he was going to put us in captivity. Now, the whole nation is going to look at us and face them. We're going to raise them up. We're going to be the top people on this earth and put us down at the bottom. Are we living through that right That's now? That's right, bro. So the most high said he's going to do so. He doesn't think he's going to do it. So he said he's going to turn around the curses and put upon all the enemies. And therefore, we're going to receive the blessings. We believe that through the spirit. Mm -hmm. you know? It's uh on second Ezra chapter three in verse sixteen. And unto him thou gavest Isaac, and unto Isaac also thou gavest Jacob and Esau. As for Jacob, thou didst choose him to thee, and put by Esau. And so Jacob became a great multitude. And it came to pass that when thou ledest his seed out of Egypt, thou broughtest them up to the Mount Sinai. And, bound the heavens. and that's what made Jacob sanctified. You know, that's what made Jacob sanctified. Receiving the law, statutes, and the commandments. And bowing the heavens, thou didst set fast the earth, movest the whole world, and madest the depths to trouble, and troublest the men of that age. And thy glory went through four gates of fire, and of earthquake, and of wind, and of cold. And thou mightest give the law unto the seed of Jacob, unto the generation of Israel. Via a chariot. Via a chariot. So it's my belief that was your house shot inside that chariot, um, using laser like technology to write those um that those Hebrew words on those two stones, man. Shalom. 